Corey Tatter. Welcome to LiveWire. In LiveWire today, we're going to be talking about a really nifty subject. So get a pencil and a piece of paper because you're going to find some information you're going to need to put down. We're going to be talking to Lisa Irwin, who is the director of a play at the Theater One. Uh, and that's a theater in Sacramento that produces some pretty hot shows throughout the year. And I think you're going to like this one. It's about the issue Roe versus Wade. So um, stay tuned for Live Wire right after this. It's called Roe, and it's by Lisa Loomer, who is um, a, one of the, the big name playwrights in the United States. And she's done many plays about issues that are uh, tough to talk about and, uh, uh, and plays to dealing with gang warfare and warfare in the, in the dining room. <laughs> and with me in the studio here is Lisa, not Lisa Loomer, but Lisa Irwin. That's right. And you are the director of the show at this theater company, Theater One. Why'd they call it Theater One? Well, uh, it is a part of the Unitarian Universalist Society of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a congregation that's a very open um, religious community, um, open to all beliefs, mm -hmm. um, guided by certain principles that include social justice and equity and uh, how we treat each other mm -hmm. um and so there is that idea of unity of all being part of humanity and and actually part of the whole web of of life together yeah, yeah. so i think that's where the one comes in so um you were part of that uh, that church yes and um they said why don't we do some powerful dramas let's pick one where uh, you're really going to uh, t touch on some of the things that are so still important. I mean, Roe versus Wade is 30x years away. Almost 50, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. 50 yes, years. About, yeah. Right. So um, it was decided in January of 1973. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so right now it's been brought up recently again. Why was that? Well, there are laws uh, that are being put forward in several different states challenging abortion rights, challenging uh, women's right to choose. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been known for a long time that, that these cases would come before the Supreme Court. Right now, we have a Supreme Court that heavily leads on the cons leans on the conservative side. Yes. And so I think those, those forces and those lawmakers that want to push the agenda of repealing Roe are taking advantage of that. And so that's why these, these cases are being heard again now. And now, okay. And, and it, so that's another good reason for taking this tush, tough subject, abortion rights, to the stage. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's a, it's a play I fell in love with. My, my husband and I, my husband Michael Irwin is the assistant director. Um, we frequent the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, mm -hmm. uh, not so much in the last two years, but before that. Did they have one? <laughs> no, uh, I mean, everything's just getting back up on its feet. Yeah. Um, but we had seen, so Roe by Lisa Loomer pr uh, premiered there in 2016. And we were just very impressed when we were in the audience. Um, it connected with aspects of my coming of age uh, in the late 70s mm -hmm. with the women's movement. And what, what really struck me about the play 
is it's not purely political. We had a saying back then that was the, the personal is political yes. and the political is personal. And, and really what this play is about is about the lives of the people involved in this historical decision. And it takes those stories very deep. Um, so the two main characters being Norma McCorvey, who gave her name to the case, but actually didn't benefit from the case because by the time it was decided, she was long past being able to have her abortion. And uh, Norma and Sarah Weddington, who was the 26-year-old attorney who argued the case wow. before the Supreme Court starting in 1971. Amazing, uh, uh, given the fact that it's an amazing issue and it's so tough and it's still tearing at the uh, fabric of American life. Right, right. But because uh, there's no middle ground in the, in the arguments, you know. What, you're going to kill somebody? No, <laughs> you're not. No, you don't have a right to do that. What, that's murder. <laughs> yes, but there are nuances in the play yes. and uh, layers of what the motivations were of the players involved in the, in the story yeah. and in the history of it. Um, and how being involved in that Supreme Court case affected them for the rest of their lives. So this is about the private lives of the uh, major people involved in that. In this large is really part. a great idea, you know. I mean, uh, you can look into um, events that we see uh, throughout America, and people are conditioned to remember what they read in the newspaper. And the newspaper, <clears throat> you know, they all come up with their own version of the story. But it usually somehow lifts its way away from uh, the, the lives of the people involved and their interaction with, the, with whatever the event is, you know, murder, uh, air, airplane crashes, whatever it is. Uh, and so this is a really true good use of the theater to uh, re revisit a, a hot topic that's still moving America in a certain direction. Yeah, it makes it really interesting. And, and it's funny. There's a lot of wit in it. And the people are just interesting people. So there are times when you may feel like crying. There are times when you're definitely going to laugh out loud. Um, and it's, it's just a very compelling story. And, and you reach within yourself to see what, what you really believe about this issue. OK, I want to see it. Yay. <laughs> Good. And so we have to, you have to tell me, how, <clears throat> how can I get tickets? So tickets, we open this Friday, March 11th. And for the first two nights, there are half-price tickets available on goldstar.com. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the rest of the run, our tickets are available at Ticket Leap. Mm -hmm. So you just put in row theater one dot ticket leap dot com. Well, that's on the screen right now. That will come up. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, we run through March 27th. Good. Uh, good, good run. Uh huh. Yep. Sundays are matinees. Friday and Saturdays are eight o'clock in the evening. Can I bring my teenager to come see it? You can bring your teenager. There is mature language and themes. Uh, our friend Norma McCorvey was, she had quite the colorful speech. Mm -hmm. So uh, be aware of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you've, uh, in a while, uh, you brought some actors and you're going to see a scene from it, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like that makes good television. I like it when you when, when we do and that. And they're with wonderful. The talking heads, but uh, but when we see uh, some drama. So we, March 11th through the 27th. That's right. And it's uh, Fridays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m. Correct. So people like me can go. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's fascinating, and it is um, a real interesting thing about uh, the the personalities uh, involved in, in their lives. As I, as I understand, there are a couple of books been written about that, uh, and maybe uh, a lot of the information it would be found in those books as well. 
And I wonder why this issue is such a, you know, it's such a hot button issue in American life. You know, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. Well, I think, I think any woman can relate to the idea of who is in control of, of our bodies. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, some, some women have religious or, or even political beliefs that differ from mm -hmm. the belief that a woman should have control over her own body. Um, Lisa Loomer didn't seek to represent one, one side of the issue or the other. Or the other one, yeah. She says that her story is kind of like a lit litmus test for what you believe mm -hmm. and that you may, you'll leave the theater being you know, more having more of a conviction for what you thought in the first place. Mm -hmm. We have some still pictures. Could we, you could uh, narrate them as okay. we should. have a couple of looks uh, at this uh, uh, production of uh, Row at Theater One. So this scene, this is in rehearsal, of course, and this is uh, Norma McCorvey on the left meeting with, there were actually two attorneys um, the arguing attorney is Sarah Weddington on the right, and then there was another attorney who's sitting at the table, uh, Linda Coffey, and they both worked on the case, and they, they needed to recruit a woman who was pregnant at the time in order to take, take, the court, uh, take the case forward to the Supreme Court. So they met with her in a pizza parlor, um, and that's Ooh, where that's they were. that's a pizza parlor. And there is the Supreme Court. Um, you know, this, this ruling has had such a wide range effect on many, many women's lives, particularly uh, poor women, um, women of color, and women who would not have access to going somewhere where they could get an abortion yes. yeah. um, with, without this law, this precedent in place. Okay, that's at the uh, <clears throat> Theater One, 2425 Sierra Boulevard, Sacramento, California. And there's, uh, you're very close to a nice restaurant row. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of good restaurants on Fair Oaks Boulevard, yep. Howe yep. Avenue. So we'll go to a restaurant and then go to the theater. That's right. That's, that's right. a good thing. And it's, that's what Susan and I do anyway. And anyway, we like doing that. So, okay. The theaters are coming back. Yes, and it's they very are. interesting. If you look at all of the pit theaters that are opening plays, they're all opening really tough, uh, tough dealing plays. Plays that are uh, that deal with, deal with social issues that we're still trying to figure out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's an exciting time for theater, and and uh, a lot is going on. And I'm so fortunate to have these two actors. Um, yes, actors. Uh, they're in demand. Uh, they, they are so waiting so long to get back on the stage, you know. Uh, it's been great. I get, I get calls <clears throat> during the day about actors. So what are you opening? What are you opening? Uh, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, well. And classes, too. You know, classes are starting up for young people who want to be actors. And, uh, and that's another good thing that's happening in our town. It is. So, and Theater One in the future? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, Mike and I are actually the, the chair people of Theater One right mm -hmm. now, so uh, we don't know what next projects are going to be. That's good. It took us two years, <laughs> and two, two t this is our third effort at putting on this show because of the pandemic. Third effort. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a short pause for the cause, a little break and with some information for you folks. Um, and you uh, will be back. We're going to talk to Elisa, but then we're going to see a scene from uh, her production of Roe by Lisa Loomer. Son, love is like the ocean. You have to tread the oh, waters. Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Jessica, will you go to prom with me? Yes. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here. 
a teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Touchdown! Oh, wow. Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. OK, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm going to need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. 145 over 92. 180 over 111. I had a heart attack and a cardiac arrest and then a stroke. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Lowering your high blood pressure could save you from a heart attack or stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. Now I'm, you know, trying to get better, stronger than ever. We're back with uh, Live Wire, and I'm Ray Tatter. And with me in the studio is Lisa Irwin, who is directing the play Row at Theater One. Hi. Hi. Yeah, that was a nice break. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, it is so good to know uh, that the theaters are going back and that uh, Theater One is uh, also lifting the baton, saying, hey, here's an important play. Yes. And what is this play? Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade. Well, the Roe play is called Roe. Yeah. On, it's about the historical uh, event of Roe v. Wade, the Roe v. Wade case. Wow. Yeah. And what's the scene we're going to see? So this is toward the end of the play, and there's been tension through, these, through the whole story between these two characters, Norma McCorvey and Sarah Weddington, who have very different backgrounds and very different lives. Mm -hmm. Um, one is the plaintiff and one is the attorney. And um, they, and, and, and Norma has changed her mind several times about her beliefs and her convictions. Mm -hmm. um, and they both have different agendas. So this scene is about a confrontation between the two of them that is a thread through the whole play, but uh, kind of comes comes to a head by the end by the end in this scene they're doing. Okay. And the actors are? The actors are Andrea Kirsten and Rebecca Nichols. Andrea plays Norma McCorvey and Rebecca Nichols plays Sarah Weddington. Right. All right. Let's have a look at this play or piece of this play called Row. Good evening. I'm here to talk to you today about Roe v. Wade. The affidavit did not happen the way I said it did. Pure and simple. I lied. Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey needed a client that would look pitiable. They got me drunk and they told me to lie and say I had been raped. Alternative facts, post-truth. Roe v. Wade is based on a lie. <laughs> Good God. So the entire abortion industry is based on a lie. And for this, I will forever be ashamed. In the world of abortion, there is not enough love. But in God's world, love grows. Which is why my next book will be titled, One by Love, available on Amazon. I am sorry she gave the opposition ammunition against Roe v. Wade, but I do not know why the press continues to give attention to a woman whose contribution to history was no more than a name on a piece of paper. Do you support the tactics of Operation Rescue? Do you support killing doctors, burning clinics? I think it is actually the abortion clinic people themselves committing violence on each other so they can collect insurance money 
and build bigger killing centers. Now, Sarah Weddington, you had an abortion. You also have been divorced and had breast cancer. Looking back, do you see any correlation? I will not deign to answer such a ridiculous question. Norma, please, do not confuse how much I care about people's rights with how little I care about People Magazine. I am not the issue. Jane Roe is not the issue. And I don't know why the press and the politicians continue to state the issue as, are you for or against abortion? The issue is, who should have power over a woman's body? The government, the doctor, or the woman herself? Hello. Thank you, thank you. Why don't you all come over here and sit down. Do we have chairs here, or do we decide not to? Well, bring your chairs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Theater One presenting Roe, uh, which is about Roe versus Wade with, uh, by Lisa Loomer. And uh, it plays March 11th through March 27th. Wow. And this is the first production you're finally getting up after the big empty time <laughs> right. cultural life here in Sacramento. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And during Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's a really good choice in timing. <laughs> so you two are finally getting back on the stage. Yes, yes, it's very, very exciting. Good. For me, it's been four years, so it's very exciting to be back on stage. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. yeah. So these characters are really interesting characters. Um, and. Um, I find it fascinating that uh, that we're we're still talking about all of this thing. I have a different opinion. I can understand why it would be uh, uh, sparked and and provide uh, more information because there's so many people that are still in the idea they don't really have idea pro-choice or mm -hmm. or hey uh, you know uh, no. <laughs> And we try to present all the sides here as well. So it's a very multifaceted production. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it, you see kind of the extremes and the lows of both sides. So it's like no matter whether you're, you're pro-choice, you're going to see sides that are going to be more pro-life. And then if you're on the pro-life side, you're going to maybe see more of the pro-choice side. And it's, I, that's what I really, really love about this show, I think, is that it's, like Lisa had stated earlier, it's not really any one side or the other. It's yes. just, it's the story of all of it. And it's just really incredible. That's good, 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 good. So are you the only two in the show? Oh, no. Definitely, <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. In the cast of 16, correct, mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. I couldn't do it without them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Is there like, a, is, it, is it a, I mean, is it a courtroom scene? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We, we play out. I mean, we can't do the entire history of the court scene because, you know, it was quite long. Um, so we have done the shortened version, but we do use word for word what was said in the actual court case. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Lisa Loomer did a wonderful job of, of writing that into the script. Uh -huh. So we use clips from the actual justices. And Sarah is talking to the justices live on stage as their recorded voices uh -huh. are speaking to her. It's very intimidating sometimes. <laughs> it's like, are they really here? But it's, you know, it's a recording, but it feels so real. I think they're all in the sky now. Yeah. yeah. But out. it's because it's been so long and we're dealing with this. Maybe it is an issue that is never going to be solved in terms of, you know, the way America is such a polyglot world. Uh, and there are, you know, uh, so many opinions, you know, about all of the issues that we deal with. But for some reason, the democratic vote is, is that if you have a majority, you, you're, you win the day. Mm -hmm. And somebody held a card up. What is that card? It says, how many more minutes do we have? Uh, two minutes left in the show? <laughs> oh, Lisa, why don't you ask uh, a question? Okay, um, let's see. What, Andrea, what do you find to be the most interesting aspect of your character, Norma? 
Oh gosh, I have <laughs> never played a more interesting character in my life. Norma, one of the lines in the play is Norma is just pro Norma. <laughs> and <laughs> nothing could be more true. And so it's interesting to play a character that's exactly opposite myself, but also is just so compelling and had so much happen to her in her life that led her to the choices that she made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And Sarah, uh, <laughs> Becca, what do you find most challenging about playing Sarah? I have to say the most challenging part about playing Sarah would be how reserved she actually is. Because I'm, you know, if anybody who knows me in real life is I'm this very big, loud character. <laughs> and so when we started doing the show, Lisa's like, no, I need you more reserved. I need you more, you know, hold back, hold back. And so going back into this very serious, very lawyerly reserved person has been kind of challenging, but it's been incredible and it's been so rewarding. So. Well, I wish you all break a leg. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to talk to me about uh, Roe and, uh, and Theater One, because I think Theater One is one of the stalwart theaters doing some pretty tough work. Thank you so much for having us. Okay, well, um, we'll be back next week with more uh, discussions about theater. We're doing a whole kind of series about theater, uh, and uh, we hope you come back uh, next week and talk, uh, talk to us on Livewire. And um, we'll have to say this again. What's the telephone number to get tickets, or what? how can I get tickets? Uh, Row Theater One dot ticketleap dot com or goldstar dot com for the eleventh or twelfth. Goldstar dot com. Mm -hmm. All right. Well we'll see you next week on Live Wire. Bye.